there's so much crossover and you know we share the same facilities the same you know computers all that sort of stuff so you know we've we've been able to generate and the boys have been in a way really generous with um allowing us into their program but you know what we've learned from doing that and and obviously you know it's, it's both ways like there's so many comments that the boys have said that having the girls around um or the w program around has just created for them as well um yeah but it's, it's just a really good feel at the group at the in the whole the whole club at the moment where everyone's represented and um it's just yeah it's been it's been fantastic i think probably from an individual perspective i think i'm just more settled in the role and i guess in a way know what's expected of me and um it's every year it becomes less and less about you and more and more about the team which um i found really enjoyable i think you know as a as a younger player and even as a younger leader um i think for the, for the most part you're just trying to establish yourself and uh you know keep continuing to evolve your own game and, and make sure that you're performing at the highest possible level but as i've gotten older and um yeah, I guess longer into the, the captaincy, very rarely do I think about my own performance and, and more think about the performance of, of my teammates and, and of the team overall and how, how, how I can help improve and um, get those guys, you know, up and running. I mean, something that we're really focused on is that leadership depth um, across the, the whole team. So obviously, you know, clearly there's some standouts. Mim Hill is one that you mentioned. Abby McKay has come and joined the leadership group this year and she's been absolutely fantastic. and really deserving of her spot. Um, I, I sort of almost in a way expected her to come in and, and be quiet and, and sort of just learn the ropes. But, you know, she, she totally, um, yeah, in a way surprised me and, and I was so proud of her the way that she just came in and, and grabbed, the, grabbed the role and has provided such an impact on our group already. She's, she's definitely one in the future that is, is well, should have leadership aspirations. Um, you know, people kind of forget how young Bree Moody is as well, um, even though she's been around since day one. She's still very young, um, even though she's not young in experience, if that makes sense. But, you know, she's a, a, a leader in her own way. She, you know, she, Moody's probably goes about things a little bit differently than the rest of us do, but that's one of the strengths of our group is that we've got different people and, and different strengths. Um, as far as leadership's concerned. The leadership group and myself had a big role to play when Bucky came in. Um, you know, we had to sort of, in a way, work out each other and work out what he wanted from us and, and what we needed from him. And, um, you know, I couldn't be prouder of the way that the, the whole group's gone about that. And in particular, you know, with Bucky coming in, he was so curious and, you know, wanted to get a really good understanding of, of our group and where we'd come from and, and where we want to go as a group. So. If anything, the motivation probably was was higher than ever because there was just so much to do, um, and I felt like, in a way, you know, I had a, a big a big role to play in that. It's a really quick way to build connection because all of a sudden you're, you know, you're spending 24 hours a day, um, you know, close to each other, and you get to see the real the real team um, when you're on the road and and how you handle different challenges. Like we just went to Sydney and got delayed by about five or six hours, so um you know you, you get different challenges on the road and as a group you get to spend a lot of time together and work out how you're gonna you know if those sort of situations arose throughout the year how would you handle them so um i love getting away with the team um i love you know just getting out of team uniform and hanging out um in different environments than what you would normally and you know going out for dinner and those sort of things is something that really galvanizes the group and um yeah particularly the, the warnable camp you know that was designed to challenge us in, in different ways but also you know really unite us and, and do some team building stuff which um, yeah which was really fun as well. So I feel like every year we've, we've become accustomed to um, changing in schedules and changing work arrangements just with the evolution of the AFLW so change isn't something that um, is new to me which as someone who doesn't really like too much change that that was um, early doors you know I felt a little bit unsettled um, doing that every year but again just through experience and, and getting on with it you, you learn to just to cope but I've really enjoyed you know working at the club a little bit more in a, in a completely different role away from AFLW um, you know doing a little bit of coaching and doing some recruiting for our Carlton College of Sport program which you know it's such a tremendous program and, and the opportunities that it provides for um, you know some up-and-coming players is, is really exciting so I've really enjoyed working with those guys and yeah moved into our house and, and got married last year so I felt like last year was a busy year and I'm glad in a way that it, that last year was finished with two AFLW seasons as well. It was, um, yeah, it was a pretty intense year, but really enjoyable at the same time. But I've certainly enjoyed this year being a little bit more settled day to day. And yeah, it's it's hard to not look too far past round one, just because I mean the preseason's been um, a real journey. I mean, Mim and I started our running group last year in December, so 
you know, we've been running and, and preparing for round one for the best part of nine months. And obviously through that time, we've already spoken about the change that had occurred with the, the new coaching staff as well. So the expectation I think is, is just to continue to, to implement or do our best to implement the, the new system that we've got in place. And, you know, we know that there's going to take some time, um, you know, for, for that to really come to fruition. But for the most part, it's, you know, sticking to the course and, um, you know, I'm really excited to see some of our younger players and some of the new recruits that we've got coming in. You know, the, the Irish girls have been absolutely tremendous through the preseason, so I can't wait to see those guys get their opportunity. And, um, you know, I think that the team is, is really clear on what we need to achieve. Um, you know, there's no confusion or, or frustration or anything like that. We're, we're really clear with what we need to, to go out there and do. So I think overwhelmingly I'm just excited to, to see what we can do um, in, in round one and beyond. Oh, I, I can't see it not having a flow-on effect. I mean, like, I was surprised myself um, and, you know, obviously being a big supporter of women's sport for a, a long time, but, like, I was just just in awe. I was absolutely amazed. I had the same feeling a little bit when the AFLW, the inception of AFLW happened back in 2017 um, and that first game when we had a lockout at Icon Park. It was the same kind of feeling where, in a way, it surprised, you know, not, not just myself or the other players, but kind of the, the rest of the, the world um, around, you know, if we do things right, what, what we can achieve. Um, and, and obviously the Matildas have, have shown that on on a scale that hasn't been seen in this country before. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone's just been inspired, um, so proud, um, you know, of what they've been able to achieve and, and the way that the, the rest of the, I guess, the community and the country got behind them. So... You know, there's, I, I can't see there not being a way that that just generates so much momentum for women's sport in this country. And hopefully, um, you know, what, what has occurred in the last couple of months just, yeah, really carries, carries through and, and the sporting organisations make the, make the recommendations to, to invest in women's sport um, because clearly when, when you do, you, the result speaks for itself. So, yeah, really, really cool to be a part of and I'm a bit sad it's over, to be honest. The Matildas, the way that they, you could see what what they were able to inspire and, and to generate and obviously with the men's program doing so well at the moment you know it's a really cool place to be at the moment at, at Carlton and I'm sure the fans um, I know the fans certainly feel that so um, yeah get get behind the AFLW team because um, you know great things are going to happen and I, I can't wait it's just yeah round one against the, against the Gold Coast if we could get a a big crowd there like what that would do for our team um, you know just to, to really lift us into the year and Hopefully, yeah, right on the back of the momentum that not only the boys have created, but the Matildas have created too. So get down there. Obviously, you know, I've been a captain for a little while now, so you have a lot of crossover with other captains that have, have been around for the similar time. So I tend to stick pretty close to Meg, Meg Mack from Geelong, uh, Hannah Priest and I from St Kilda. Um, we tend to tend to buddy up, but everyone's really friendly, so it's not too bad. There's not too much rivalry. Maybe Bree Davey. Bree Davey, I'm sure there's always a bit of banter. Um, but yeah, it's all, all in good fun and I'm looking forward to the day.